there folks so several of you guys have asked me to show you the settings i use and how to set up the dolphin emulator on my new nvidia shield android tv device so on our website freeemulator.com i set up a couple different links here for you to try um, i'll explain a few things real quick so the latest official build i could get working halfway decent was 4.0-5672 i'll explain more about that here in a minute why the newer ones aren't working right and then I found on the Dolphin forums, the Android forums, they have um, unofficial optimized number one and unofficial optimized number two. You can see in the status bar of Google Chrome there kind of their titles. Um, these have, uh, I've gotten better frames per second FPS is on a lot of games using these. And uh, I think these were the first ones that let you actually set the um, Dolphin overclock settings not for your tablet, but for the Dolphin emulator itself. And I'll show you how to do the overclocking and stuff as well in this video, um, since several people have asked about it. So yeah, these three, I'll alternate um, trying these out with different games. If you're not happy with the performance and with one of them, try out a, one of the others. I do that for most of the games I actually mess with. For instance, the Time Splitters 2 game with the official build, it ran at like 40 42 frames per second i believe with these unofficial builds that are optimized um now these aren't optimized necessarily for the shield i think for the latest gen android devices though they were back maybe in january february or something like that of 2015. but anyways for the unofficial builds i was able to get a smooth 60 frames per second uh with time splitters too with the right settings so it's pretty cool um let's see what next i guess i'll show you so I, I've tested out several different builds for Dolphin. Um, and I made some notes here about them. Uh, starting with a pretty old one. It's too old, lots of missing issues. And I tested it out with two different games, mostly, just to see what kind of frames per second I would get FPS. So I tried it out with, uh, I've got MM, it's supposed to be MK, Mario Kart Double Dash and Super Smash Bros. Melee. So. I was telling you earlier that, let's see, this was the latest one I could get working with this Shield device right now. And the newer builds, such as 4.0-5695, the game list wouldn't work. So you'd go and set the directory, and as, you'd apply it, and as if, as if nothing happened, it wouldn't show up any games. Um, let's see. But now starting with 6000, it would work. Um, but... The graphics were super messed up and wonky looking. The graphics would jump around the screen and bounce around. Made it unplayable. So it's pretty crazy. And so I tried out several different versions here. Same issues. And starting around 63.99. And this is to the latest. The graphics jump around. And the controller bindings would reset every time you would boot into a game. So it made it where you couldn't even use a controller. The on-screen controls don't work either. Um, you can't even adjust the on-screen controls to move them around on the screen. It just, as soon as you try to do that, it kicks you back right to the Dolphin menu. So yeah, I tried out the latest versions too, as of this uh, video making. I think they're up to 6621 or something by now. But yeah, so issues with the newest ones. Hopefully I've been in contact with one of the Android dev, uh, devs for the um, Dolphin emulator, and I'm hoping that they'll be able to get those issue straightened out. So now we'll move on here to my capture window. I just want to show you how to install the emulator, some settings I'm using, how to um, overclock, all that good stuff. So we'll go down here. You got to have some kind of a file manager. I like to use the ES File Explorer myself. This is so you can sideload uh, the app. You have to do this for any, for, for most apps. There are some that are built for the actual um, Android TV device that I'm using. But um, so we'll go ahead and install this here, Master 5672 APK. So you just click it. I'm using the Shield Controller, hit A, go to install. And now if you haven't set up your device um, to install APK files from unknown sources, you're going to have to do this. Um, it'll, it'll pull up a little screen and it'll ask you to go and set it up in your um, settings, and it's really easy to do. You just gotta turn it on. But I've already done that, so I'm not gonna show you about that. We'll go ahead and install. Sorry if my voice, voice is fading in and out. I'm looking at a couple different screens right now. So go ahead and open up the emulator real quick. And I've got a mouse plugged into my device. It's kinda hard to configure this with the controller. Sometimes 
I'm sitting here clicking different directions and it won't go to the right list. It's kind of messed up. So anyways, first we'll do a browse folder. This is just to locate your ROMs directory. I did have this set as just plain ROMs instead of A underscore ROMs. But whenever um, I did that, some of the newer builds, it wouldn't let you scroll up and down, so I could never see it. So I set to A ROMs and it's all good. So I'll go to GameCube and just click on any of these files here. And then it brings up your list of games, so that's easy enough. You should know how to do that. So now we'll go into the actual settings. So I like to enable dual core. That really, really speeds things up. Fast mem as well. So the CPU core, the interpreter, you're going to get terrible speeds with that. So you want the JIT ARM64 recompiler. Um, we'll go do the bindings here in a minute. So we want definitely the OpenGL software render also makes it terribly slow. I like to hit show FPS here just so you guys can see what the games, the speed of the games run at. So enhancements, internal resolution. Um, right now I've been setting it to two times. This device though seems to work pretty well with some games at three times. Um, I'll explain that here in just a second. The full screen anti-aliasing, you can do one, two, or four. Um, with Time Splitters 2, I was actually able to do two times internal and four times um, into icing and still get 60 frames per second, so that's pretty sweet. But for most of my testing purposes, I'll leave it at one time, just so I'll make sure to get the max FPS. Go back over here to my computer screen real quick. Let me downsize this. So for Time Splitters 2, here are the different internal resolutions and anti aliasing settings and what frames per second I got. Some of you guys are asking about this. So as you can see, I said a minute ago, three times internal resolution, one times into aliasing, I still got 60 frames per second. And even with uh, three times internal resolution, internal resolution, four times anti-aliasing, I can't talk, 55 to 56 frames per second. So that's pretty good. And you can uh, stop, pause the video if you want to see more of those. Go back into here real quick. Um, I don't believe, let me grab my mouse, don't believe I change anything else on here. But I do, let's see, in hacks. In order to get um, Time Splitters 2 to run at 60 frames per second, I had to enable both skip EFB access from CPU and ignore format changes. Um, the other settings just default, is what I've been doing. Fast step calculation. I think it helps out on quite a few games. Just leave this to auto for now. I don't like doing the stretching and all that. There's no widescreen hack implementation into this. Otherwise, I would try to use a Okay, so yes, we've done enhancements and hacks. So I guess all that's left now to show you guys is overclock settings, how to apply those. Sorry about the squeaky chair. So we'll go back down here. You need to go into your file explorer. You can probably do this from a computer as well, but I like doing it from here. Okay, so the dolphin-me folder. Open that bad boy up. Go to your config folder, dolphin.ini. I like to open it up just in the... ES Node Editor. Go over here to your little vertical ellipses. Ooh, hold on. Okay, I guess I gotta actually start a game before those will take into effect. Sorry, I didn't didn't know that. So to open up Dolphin, we'll go here, here, back, there. There we go. Okay. So let me just boot up. Time splitters. Oh, I didn't show you real quick the bindings. I better do that. I can, I've done this so many times, I can quickly do this. Enable A, B, X, Y, Z button, your start, up. Okay. Almost down here. A couple more to go. Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and start at Time Splitters 2. And I hit the little back button on the controller. I'm going to disable the input overlay, get rid of that. So yeah, the FPS in the menus doesn't run at full 60 frames per second, but the games do. Okay. Well, that game does. So that should have done the trick. I hit my home button. We'll go back here, open this up. And there we go. We've got a lot more options here. So we'll go to our vertical ellipses again. Hit A, go to edit. Hit A again. And then there we go, our overclock settings are boom right there. 
So you'll want to set this to true. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Oh, well, I guess I screwed that up. I thought I could highlight it and delete it. I guess not. Space. T-R-U-E. And your overclock, the default is 1.0. You can try that out. You can also try out, I think I've seen what other people recommend, is to give, let's see, 0. 0.2 and then leave all the zeros there or you can change it to 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 and leave all the zeros there and then you just hit your back button your B button on the controller if that's what you're using hit it again you want to save yes and then you can leave that open if you want so you can quickly access it again if you want to change you want to mess around with your overclocking functions but that is going to do it, folks. Um, I guess I should show you one more thing when you're switching between apps. I've noticed um, sometimes it saves the settings. If you don't, you got to go and delete the files, and it can get wonky if you're using like pretty drastically different versions. So we'll go here to apps, our Dolphin Emulator, uninstall it, hit OK. But that doesn't do everything. You got to go back to your file browser, whatever you're using. So you'll go back, as you can see, still have the dolphin-mu folder. To delete it, um, I use the controller. I just hold down A when it's highlighted. It'll check it. Then scroll down to the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. Hit delete. Hit OK. And that'll delete it. And then you can go and install one of your other builds the same way we did earlier, such as one of these optimized ones I showed you. But all right, folks, that is going to be it for this video. I hope this helps some of you guys out. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And if you have any requests for me to do games for any of the emulators, Dolphin or PPSSPP or whatever the case, let me know. So you folks have a good one. I hope you found this video helpful. Bye-bye.